Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. Today I would like to follow up in a video I did last week, Purism Ghost Leave 5 Customer, Lies About Refund Policy, Avoid. The TLDR of that video is somebody pre-orders a phone, they realize that this phone is probably never going to actually come out, they ask for a refund several years later, they did not buy this from Kickstarter, they bought it from the company's own website. So they're kind of owed a phone at that point, and if they don't get the phone, they're kind of owed a refund. The person was told they cannot get a refund unless they wait a few months, they waited a few months, no refund, they check in on the status of the refund, Refund, they say, okay, we're going to work on getting you your refund. And then after that, a few months later, after getting ghosted again, he emails again and is told, oh yeah, no refund for you, even though we don't have a phone to ship you. And this is one of those cases, it's, it's one of those unfortunate cases where somebody's riding that wave of people caring about freedom phone, privacy phone, FOSS phone, I'm going to give you it if you pay me now in four or five years phone and not actually getting anything. And it's very informative and unfortunate how this particular situation worked out. I think that this is a horrible company, not because they were not able to deliver the product, but for what they did. If they simply said, mea culpa, we screwed up. Here's how we screwed up. Here's the situation we're in. I would understand even if it wasn't an ideal situation. That's not what happened. What they chose to do is they chose to try and make the customer go away by telling him you can get a refund later. They ghosted him for months after he requested his refund. They decided, we're not going to respond to this person that gave us hundreds of dollars. We're going to pretend he doesn't exist. And then they finally changed their mind and said, yeah, we're not giving you a refund. That's just a really crappy way to deal with people. And they're still sending out emails to this day asking for people to invest in them, which is absolutely hysterical when they don't even have the ability to deliver on the promises that they made to people five years ago. Anyway, after this happened, I got a message that I can only describe as one of the most culty things I have read in a very long period of time, and I'd like to read it to you. I'm not going to say the person's name. I'm just going to read the message. Very dear Lewis, I founded my digital agency in 2008, and I'm now in the final stages of selling it. Fingers crossed, I'm out in a few months. We have worked with Fortune 100, all levels of the Israeli government, top ad agencies, and startups of all shapes and sizes I can think of. In parallel, I founded another company, did some interviewing work for fun, got tired of it all in 2019, and decided to take an extended leave to work on my character. Although I'm still a work in progress, my wife and kids will be the first to testify for the advancement I have made in the past few years. I did not plan to get involved in anything for another few years beyond my board commitments and a bit of volunteering, but felt the urge to email Todd with purism. Insane, right? This is before I knew what I know now, and offer him a hand after buying and actually receiving his products. So here I am meeting you on my spiritual journey, contacting you after being deeply influenced by your recent video. The two highlights were, one, a horrible customer journey of an early supporter. Two, a post on Hacker News indicating the shortcomings of the Libram phone. Some of what you said was new. When I integrated it with the information I've already known, especially the insider information I've collected over the past few months, I have a new perspective. And I would like to thank you for helping me reshape my paradigm through which I see my work with purism. This whole reshape my paradigm and... Are you buying this? I appreciate you standing for justice and preventing other potential buyers from going through the same pain. Lewis, this is an important moment in my life. My involvement with purism and my interaction with you can significantly impact purism's future as I speak with Todd directly. Therefore, I would like you to thoroughly consider my request. I am asking to have a 20 to 30 minute phone call with you over the weekend or on Monday to confidentially share uh, what I know on top of what you've mentioned. Then we can synergize and see what we can do to, with this information. I don't have a concrete outcome in mind, but I think combining our thoughts and knowledge can create one and that will benefit many. Please let me know if you have a time. What I said was simple. Being honest with you, I'm not really invested enough in purism for a half hour phone call. I have no skin in the game here. I'm not an investor. I'm not an influencer of this company and I don't work there. I don't care about this product since it doesn't seem very impressive. Whether purism makes a ton of money and the CEO gets rich or they don't make a ton of money and they lose all their money has no effect on my company, my day, my goals, or my life. I just hope for less people to give money to a company that treats their customers like garbage. Great. Thank you, Lewis. Have a cup of something warm and lean back in a cozy chair as I worked on the below for the whole day and well into the night. Please take your time to consider it thoroughly. Take it in and think it through. I will start with personal. I do not get along with untruthful people. I don't see a basis for any relationship, working or personal, if there is no trust, which is the foundation. I organize workshops for entrepreneurs on spirituality, and just a few weeks ago, someone tried to challenge me about honesty. He told a story about his gaming business for which he had hired a salesperson who had screwed him days earlier. He had made a real estate transaction with her and thought that she is the best candidate for the job. He tried to convince me in the group that her dishonesty brought her luck, a new job with him. I inquired, would you like this person to be your friend? No. How about your partner or family member? Oh, for sure, no. Now imagine how all her relationships look like with her current character and mindset. 
He agreed. My belief in truthfulness as a virtue is very deep. I practice it with my girls every day. If I say I will, it's an equivalent of I promise. So if circumstances change and my promise doesn't make sense anymore, I ask them to relieve me from that promise. If they don't, I do the thing that I said I will, even if it doesn't make sense anymore. If I said I will, it's up to the receiver to relieve me. My girls are just seven and four, but they deserve the same level of respect I give to others because the same principles govern all my relationships. These principles are universal. When Kyle left Purism in May, Todd asked me to take over the customer service. All I write below is true and accurate to my knowledge, and I would like you to truly try to understand me. I got curious and wanted to investigate a paradox I've noticed. On one hand, it has the mission, the values, very strong open source community. Well, on the other, it has all this backlash from the very same people who helped the company in the very early days. After interviewing most of the staff here, speaking and helping over 50 customers and resolving quite a few internal problems, here's what I've learned so far. Todd ran a successful crowdfunding campaign on Kickstarter. He had then moved to his own platform, Purism Site, and can continue raising money for a product that did not exist. The goal was quite ambitious and required extensive R&D. The money they received from the supporters was paid to suppliers, anything from microchip manufacturers to software developers. When things took longer than expected, not only due to COVID, as this is quite a journey even without COVID, and weren't communicated with consistency, some people started getting cold feet and requested refunds. At that point, he still had some extra cash, so he processed the refunds without hurting the other 99% of those who kept believing in the company. The news about refunds and the doubts about reaching the goal spread quickly, and that triggered many others to request refunds in a short period of time. Quickly, the amount of refunds outpaced what he could handle without stopping the R&D. This work was necessary to meet Purism's obligations to the users who kept their faith, which is still over 90% of everyone who had contributed. The decision was straightforward. 90% voted with their money to continue. If Todd honored the refund request from the 10% who wanted to withdraw it, it would have hurt the 90% who kept their support. The reason for this inability to refund was miscalculation. Production of the phone ended up costing more than people had paid to pre-order it. So another paradox I've discovered was that it was cheaper for Purism to refund than to send the phone. The difference was financed through sales of other products. Todd decided to honor his commitment to the majority and keep the investment in the R&D, while honoring the refund requests over time by funding them other products. His other alternative was honoring 10% to be refunded right away, which would have shut down the operations, tanking the other 90% of supporters. That would have not been fair to the supermajority. This is the background behind the problematic refund policy offering a refund when a customer is reaching the queue. Totally agree. Not a good policy. Would love to hear other ideas. Don't lie to people. Don't tell them that we will consider a refund in the queue and then say fuck you once they have reached the queue. Further, don't ignore your customers for two months at a time. If a customer emails me and it takes Kevin more than two hours to email that customer back, I torture him in every manner that Greg Abbott will legally allow me to torture my employees in this state of which there are many. Some of those who asked for refunds became entrenched in their positions. They did not want the phone anymore. They didn't want store credit. They started being very vocal and spoke out against purism. Sales of other products started to decline, in part because of the reputation damage, which turned away potential clients. This negative reputation reduces sales, which reduces the refunds that we can honor. It's a downward spiral, a lose-lose for all. Right now, we are heavily invested in stock. We ship hundreds of phones every week, which is what that initial money came to fund. We are reaching shipping parity soon. Our situation still does not allow to honor all refund requests at once, and we do not enjoy this at all. This has consequences on the reimbursement of our staff too, so we had some painful cuts to stay lean and viable in the long term. Once we turn around that stock and convert it to cash, we'll be in a much better position. To summarize, Todd promised something that he could only achieve with the financial support of others. People believed in him and voted with their money. Once they did, Todd invested that money into product. Now that he has the product after he worked on it for years, some people want their money back. It's cheaper for him to refund than to send the phone. So we do honor refunds when we generate cash from other products. I refunded about 30 customers in May with about 20 accepting exchanges. The refunds were financed by a good month selling other hardware. This leads me to a philosophical point. Thanks for hanging in there, Lewis. I really appreciate this communication with you and your openness. But that's not the philosophical point. Here it comes. Your intention behind this video is for less people to give money to a company that treats their customers like garbage. Like I wrote, that's an honorable goal. Now that I explained our situation, I would like to extrapolate the consequences of your video. We have about 600 people waiting for their refunds, which is preferable to us sending them the phone. We have their phone, but they don't want it. It's a win-win for us to give them their cash back. We do that from sales of phones, laptops, and soon tablets. Your video highlights only one part of the story. We have not had an opportunity to explain what stands behind our inability to refund. I hope that by now I have succeeded to explain that we are not a scam at all and we have the same good intentions that you do. He's just like me. 
I ignore my customers when they email me for months too. I make false promises to my customers too. We're the same person. I run entrepreneurial seminars where I teach people about all this foofy poofy bullshit that allows you to reshape and pretend that you're the good guy when you're not. In many of my videos, I have gone over this for years, and this is a very important sticking point that I need all of you to be aware of. I never assume that I am a good person. I have gone over this many times in many videos. I never assume that I'm a good guy. And the reason I never assume that I'm a good person is because the people that assume that they are the good guys tend to be the biggest pieces of shit imaginable. More important, the people that will tell themselves that they are honest, they are true, that they do what they say and say what they do, and even with their daughter, they did that and the other. If you tell yourself that you are a good person, you will frame all of your actions, everything you do, how you plan a business, how you communicate with your customers, how you deal with your employees, everything gets framed through the idea that I am good. And as long as you're framing everything that you're doing and saying through this I am good nonsense, then everything you're doing must be in the pursuit of a good cause, even if you're scamming people, even if you're screwing people, even if you're ignoring people. I always assume that I am a piece of shit. When people ask me, when they say, Louis, you're a great guy, You'll see it on my live streams, you'll see it in my comment section. 100% of the time that this happens, I tell them, no, I am a piece of shit. It is not being done as a form of self-deprecation. I mean it when I say that. I assume that I am the bad guy. I assume that I am the villain. I assume that everything I do, I do out of selfish self-interest. Because as long as I assume that I am the bad guy, it gets rid of this blind spot where you give yourself a license to screw people and not even care. You see, the thing is, I needed to keep my obligations to the 90% that were not asking for refunds. So I had to not refund the 10% that were asking. If I told them, I can't give you a refund because I don't have the money to, rather than telling them nine months down the line, no refunds, then maybe more of the 90% would ask for refunds. And then we would have less money to continue developing the product. And then when those people speak up, then all the other people are not going to want the product and they're going to ask for refunds too. So really what I you see, what I have to do is I have to ignore your email. I have to lie to you about the financial condition of the company. I have to lie about whether or not I'm even able to give you a refund. I have to lie to you and tell you come back in six months for your refund so that you don't ask for a refund so that I can better serve these people over here because I'm a good person. I'm not lying. I'm not screwing you. I'm a good guy. This is why I assume I'm a piece of shit because if I assume that I'm a piece of shit and I find myself in a position where I'm ignoring somebody, I'm lying to somebody, and I am taking their money, the natural conclusion there is I'm doing something wrong. I should stop this. But if I assume I'm a good person, I can craft a narrative that allows me to continue doing this bullshit indefinitely. We are sold this false concept of what a villain is by comics and the media. This idea that villains are Lex Luthor, villains are Kuja from Final Fantasy IX. They're not. At the end of the day, many villains are not people that are honest about the fact that they are a villain. They're not honest about their intentions. They don't, <laughs> as they destroy the world, they actually believe in their mind that they are good people doing good things, and that every bad thing they do is actually a good thing because it was the pursuit of the good mission that they have because they're a good person. The biggest villains in society think they are good people, and it's something that's really important to keep in mind. We are sold this false bill of goods by comics and the media as to what it is that constitutes a bad person. A bad person is the Joker. A villain is Lex Luthor. A villain is Kuja from Final Fantasy IX. At the end of the day, villains are not people that are, ha, 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 I'm going to destroy the world. If I can't live, then nobody can. That's not the way any of this works. In the real world, the biggest villains, the people that do the most harm to society, actually believe and buy into the fact that they are good people. And they use that justification. If I am good and I want to do good, therefore everything I am doing is in the pursuit of good. So if I have to do a little bad here, it is in the pursuit of good. Those are the people that are the most dangerous. The most dangerous people in the world are the villains that convince themselves that they are doing good and that they are good people. People that are honest about the fact that they're evil, I'll take Kuja from Final Fantasy IX, I'll take the Joker, I'll take Luke Lex Luthor any day over the type of people that convince themselves of this self-aggrandizing entrepreneurship seminar, I do good, honest to my children, do what I say, say what I do, garbage because that's what it is. It's culty garbage that gives them a license to screw over as many people as possible without ever feeling 
bad. This sociopathic mindset short circuits that part in your brain that stops you from doing something wrong when you know in your heart that you're lying and you're screwing people. And it's sick. We are aligned. I chose to be vulnerable with you and expose our weaknesses and shortcomings. I hope you treat this with understanding and care. I see you. The issue is that your broad reach will significantly hinder our ability to sell more products and refund these 600 people. Are we or our products perfect? Of course not. Some people think they are garbage, but there are others who absolutely love it. And they are intelligent and educated people. They just have their own reasons. We're all different and we're all trying to accomplish different goals in life. So while purism is not for everyone, it still is for some, for their own reasons. So my conclusion is that your intention to help, you are driven by compassion and have a strong value system. You're an independent thinker with a strong sense of identity and high integrity. You stand for justice. So do I. And that's why I am with purism to make things right. And I'm kindly asking for your help. My question to you, as the conclusion of this manifestation of patience in a form of a very long read is, what would have to be true for you to remove the video? Ding, 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 ding. And now we have figured out what all of that bullshit was written for. The reason for all of that culty entrepreneur seminar sounding bullshit is because you want me to delete a video that goes over the truth that you ghosted a customer for months and fucked them over and strung them along for a year rather than be honest with them up front. All you had to do up front to get my support was say, listen, here's the issue we're in. We're having financial difficulties. Here's how it worked out. I am sorry. If you did that, you would have my support. You didn't do that. You lied to the customer. You ignored the customer. And then you fucked them. And because you fucked them, I am not going to listen to this foofy poofy bullshit now, nor am I going to let you off the hook. You have got some fucking balls asking me to delete a video particularly appealing to my sense of compassion and integrity. Fuck you, sir. What commitment or evidence would you like me to provide? I would like us to be goal-oriented and be focused on helping these 600 folks to get their money back. What work would you like to see done in the future so that you would remove your post now? If it was anything in the world, what would have to happen for you to reconsider? A time machine. A time machine. I'm committed to do work. Be proactive and practical. Not removing the post would hurt everyone, even if we don't recover from this reputational damage. It, see what he's doing there? He's saying, listen... Look what you made me do. This is kind of like the spouse that like, like, he does this. He takes his wife's hand and he puts it on his wrist and then does, look what you made me do. Look what you made me do. You made me not refund the customers. Look, ow, look, our customers are getting, we, we would love, we would have loved to refund our customers. We would have loved to have been honest with them, but we can't because you did a video years after we ignored and screwed them. Damn you, Lewis. I'm not saying we're flawless, we have lots to improve, but we might not have this opportunity anymore if this video is not removed. It's very real and will especially hurt those people whom you and I want to help. Let's unite for these poor folks. Let's incorporate your input in our policies and products to prevent it in the future. We're on the same side and want the same thing. My response, my response to all of this was very simple. You almost got me, dot, dot, dot. He almost got me. This is the most underhanded, manipulative bullshit. And I want to point this out, and I want you to really understand what makes this language manipulative. You're just like me. Look, I know you're trying to do a good thing. Let me help you do a good thing by helping us to continue to do bad things without being held to task. You trying to hold us accountable and responsible for screwing over our customers is actually the reason that we're not able to stop screwing our customers. It's this sick little guilt loop that just makes me absolutely disgusted. The customer that emailed me this emailed me back when I shared with him. I'm glad you see through this manipulative bullshit. He tries to butter you up and then guilt trip you by saying that it's your fault if we can't get refunds and if other people can't get this products. This honesty shtick is as transparent as can be. The people who will tell everyone they are saints are the worst sinners. There are a few points I'd like to say in retort. I did believe in purism back when I bought the phone, even though I had no reason to. It is in no way my or anyone else's fault that they miscalculated and are failing to deliver on their promises. This is precisely why I waited so long to speak out, because I wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt. This dude waited four years, by the way. That's really patient. The straw that broke the camel's back was as you saw the response I got from customer service. A cut and dry, re no refunds, after telling me that I could get a refund months later. 
He says they have not had the opportunity to explain why their position has changed so much. Bear in mind, they have sent out quarterly emails to supporters to update them on the situation of the Libram 5, and they have never once mentioned any of this. Even if they had, it is not my job to make sure a company of which I am not just a customer stays afloat. They even have the balls to send out emails asking people for investment money. If you remember how the liquidity problem went with Robinhood during the GME fiasco, you realize that people don't have any sympathy. They expected them to fulfill their obligations, and when they didn't, they said goodbye. And there was even some talk of legal repercussions. Finally, I find it endlessly baffling how he recognizes that his company treated me and others like garbage, and then talks about his spiritual journey of treating people right, only to end with what was obviously the goal from the very beginning, which was to get you to remove your video so that no one else can see how this company treats people. Can anybody watching raise your hand if you believed within the first 20 seconds of me reading his email that he wanted me to remove the video? Raise your hand if you knew that that was the ass from the very beginning. No, that's not how this works. I'm not removing my video. You stop treating your customers like garbage. Be honest and upfront with your customers. Don't wait until somebody with over a million subscribers points out that you're screwing people over to be upfront with your customers. How about you get into a time machine, be honest with your customers a year ago. How about you be honest with your intentions with them on the refunds? You be honest when it comes to emailing replies to them when they email you. I have a lot of unpleasant emails at my company that I got to deal with on a regular basis that I employ people to deal with on a regular basis. You can open and respond to your unpleasant emails the same way that I have to respond to mine when I take customer money. And above all, get out of here with this spiritual journey bullshit. Just don't. If you're going to do that stuff, at the very least, don't come out with that shit when you ask me to remove a video holding you accountable. That is transparent, that is obvious bullshit, and everybody can see through it. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. If you give money to this company at this point, that's on you. And to be clear, I am still staying private about what I know. As I mentioned in this Reddit post almost four years ago, I had very clear reason to think that this entire company was a scam three and a half years ago. Unfortunately, I'm not able to say what that is publicly because I would be betraying the trust of somebody I care about that I know personally that I actually, I, I actually respect the confidence of. Some dude asking me to delete my video after I rip point out that his company is screwing people? No. There's no expectation of privacy there. You don't have an expectation of privacy when you email me asking me to delete a video holding your company accountable for screwing people after years of screwing people. No. The person that I actually care about, they've earned an expectation of privacy with me. I knew that this company, in many ways, was going to be scamming people three years ago. Like, I knew it. I just couldn't say why at the time. And it kills me that to this day, I still can't say why. But I knew this was coming. And I waited until there was a lot of proof that this is what was coming. And this is exactly what happened. This is exactly what happened. I made it through this video without ruining my new Microsoft 600 keyboard. I will leave while I'm ahead. And if you're actually into this whole privacy secure phone thing, I may have differences with the developer of the operating system. I may have some things to say about my thoughts on how he views the world and social interactions. And I may, but that, all of that stuff aside, if you want actual privacy and security where they actually do what they say, they say what they do, and they deliver, check out Graphene OS. Seriously. They are actually doing everything that purism claims they want to do, and it is actually technically proficient. Every claim that they make is true, unlike purism. Everything that they say is actually making what they're doing more secure is true, unlike purism. And at the end of the day, they're not screwing people. Maybe they have a little lead developer that is, um, I'll leave it at that. You can watch my old videos if you want to know about that. But they're actually doing what they're claiming. It is actually good code. They're not scamming and screwing people, which is more than I can say for this culty bullshit that you see at Purism. And if you're actually into this whole privacy secure phone thing, I may have differences with the developer of the operating system. I may have some things to say about my thoughts on how he views the world and social interactions. And I may, but that, all of that stuff aside, if you want actual privacy and security where they actually do what they say, they say what they do, and they deliver, check out Graphene OS. Seriously. They are actually doing everything that purism claims they want to do, and it is actually technically proficient. Every claim that they make is true, unlike purism. Everything that they say is actually making what they're doing more secure is true, unlike purism. 
And at the end of the day, they're not screwing people. Maybe they have a little lead developer that is, um, I'll leave it at that. You can watch my old videos if you want to know about that. But they're actually doing what they're claiming. It is actually good code. They're not scamming and screwing people, which is more than I can say for this culty bullshit that you see at Purism. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something.